<sighs> that is how technology is. I hope now at least you can hear me. If you cannot even see me, it doesn't matter. But at least I hope you can hear me. Okay, we've lost a lot of valuable time trying desperately to get going and then technology playing jokes with us. Doesn't matter. As I was mentioning, I hope you could uh, hear some part of what I was saying right in the beginning. I think you've heard nothing. Hmm? You've heard nothing. So let me start right from the beginning. Today I'm taking up a very serious topic because many of us here in Banjara who are doing counseling have been coming across adults who went through some form of trauma in their childhood, be it verbal, be it uh, physical, be it sexual, some form of molestations, etc., that they went through could not really resolve it, could not talk it over with anybody, suppressed it, thought that by suppressing, I will be able to get over, grew up, became adults. And whenever these painful memories would come back, they would think that, yes, this happened in the past. I know that, you know, things are not were, went bad, that particular incident or that particular experience. But that was when I was a child. No, now I have grown up. I have moved on in life. I have my own responsibilities. I have my family. I may have whatever it is. So whatever happened at that time, what's the point in breaking it up? That's what has happened to a lot of people. Even when they've tried to talk to somebody, maybe their spouse, maybe their parent or whatever it is, very often they were told it's over and done with. Don't keep recalling these horrible and dirty things. Don't talk to people. People will look down upon you if you mention this. Just forget it. Come on, move on. There's no threat right now. No, everything is okay. No, move on in life. But it's not as simple as that. And the most you know, alarming thing which people are not aware of is anything to do with very traumatic childhood experience. If it is not resolved, it continues into your adult life, not just in areas of your close relationships or of your sexuality, but in various other ways. I have found people who have be become tyrants in the office because they have not been able to resolve childhood trauma. I have seen people becoming extremely possessive and very, very strict parents to the extent of putting their child off completely because they have not resolved their trauma. I have seen of marriages breaking up because people have not been able to resolve. They carried that baggage into the marriage. The spouse said, I don't have to take responsibility for whatever happened to you. I come with a clean slate, you come with a clean slate, but this person is not able to come into the marriage with a clean slate. And therefore, either marriages break up or marriages go through a lot of turmoil and so many factors which are, as I said, most of the time swept under the carpet. And that is why I brought up this topic today. Okay. There are two aspects to this, obviously. One is what to do with children. Overall, how to educate children to protect themselves against abuse. Then what to do if you suspect that a child may be abused or maybe having a threat of abuse. What to do when a child has actually been abused and has to heal herself or himself. That whole thing is one part of it. Today, my simple topic within this limited time is about adults who have survived child abuse years ago, moved on in so many aspects of their life, but their life is being affected. So I would like to quickly first show you what are the areas or possible behavior patterns of adults who have had trauma in childhood and have not been able to emotionally resolve it. They may have been given protection, they may have been moved away, all that may have happened. But at the emotional level, as I said, in majority of the cases, nobody thought it important to resolve it. So what happens to such a uh, people. What are the possible? I'm not saying every survivor of child abuse goes through all these, but it's just a checklist for you to try and understand if 
there, there is a possibility that this could be affecting me since I'm one of the survivors. So here is the list that we have uh, made out, you know, just a sort of checklist for uh, uh, you to, you know, uh, understand and see what could be the possible factors. Number one. Number one, some possible behavior patterns in that, number one, the first one, yes, strong sense of guilt and worthlessness. This is the most important uh, one I want you to understand. If there is a sense of guilt, if there is a sense of low self-esteem, if there is a sense of, you know, that I am wrong, I did something horrible, I was a bad child, please become aware of that. The next one is this question, you know, why me? Why did I allow myself to be abused? Why did I keep going back to the abuser? When I was abused by one person, why did I go back to a second person to get abused over there? What is wrong with me? Next. Ah, yes. Why did I continue to go back or why was I abused by the second person? Next. Value conflict, particularly if it is incest. Please remember that vast majority of the sexual abuse cases are by trusted adults, not by strangers. That is a myth. Most of the time abuse takes place by a person whom the child trusts and therefore surrenders to the adult and then the adult takes advantage of uh, uh, it. So morals, ethics, what is right and wrong? Are these people supposed to protect me or are they villains? You know, in a child life, it should be a very clear thing of heroes and villains. But that's what we have been taught in all the fairy tales. No, there are those horrible people out there, the villains, and there are, I'm surrounded by my family, my loved ones, my uh, friends who are all the good people. But now the value system starts taking a turmoil and then bad experience of sharing deciding never to talk again. I spoke to a friend, I spoke to an aunt, I spoke to my, my own mother, and I had such a bad experience that I'll never talk about this to anybody else, suppressing it. Continued fear of the abuser or similar uh, situations, vulnerability. Will somebody attack me even now? Will something go uh, wrong? Where is that abuser? And will that person come back to haunt me again? Confronting the abuser, anger, or the reverse of that, becoming totally resigned. Suspicious nature in general or against specific people. I don't want to trust anybody. I don't like anybody coming close to me. Why is so-and-so being nice to me? These type of thoughts start coming in the mind. Unable to have healthy, close relationships, particularly with the opposite gender. The moment there is a person of the opposite gender who's just being friendly, the antenna goes up. Is this person also trying to molest? Is this person having vested uh, interest? And in general also, inability to form close uh, uh, relationships. Low self-esteem, not allowing any uh, you know uh, enjoyment or want. So I know that life is going well. I have a good family. I have loved ones. I have wealth. I have health. I have everything. But still, I can't be happy. Those type of uh, uh, feelings come into the see. The person either starts flaunting the body, trying to attract men or trying to show off and say, okay, do what you want. Come on, let's see. You want to ogle, you want to come close to me, I'll show you. I'll you know, treat you a lesson. Or the reverse, wearing baggy clothes, not want to be identified with your gender, not showing the femininity and trying to hide behind you know, these type of uh, uh, dresses. People often become over possessive or protective about their own children because they know that they have gone through such a trauma as a child. So I become very, very over conscious about what could possibly happen to my child. Cannot enjoy, be happy, always missing something in life. This is something which I have already mentioned uh, to you. Troubled with, you know, this uh, uh, thoughts about unnatural sex, wanting to abuse somebody, wanting to do something which goes against basic principles and values. A person may not do it, 
but such thoughts keep coming into the mind and that creates more guilt and more of unpleasantness in the mind of the person that see i'm such a horrible person i'm getting these type of uh, you know thoughts some earliest memories are often wiped out the child says i don't remember anything that happened uh, to me i don't think i was the victim of an abuse the whole incident the child's mind has pushed 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 and put it all the way down into what we call as our unconscious mind it keeps troubling but you are not able to recall the exact uh, issues that uh, happened doubts whether it actually happened how it happened am i making it up am i exaggerating how could this have happened to me how could such a respectable person do this 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 to me these are the type of doubts which start coming into the mind so just to give you an idea i thought i will share this uh, you know checklist with you even if one two three four out of all these are going on in your mind it is time to sit up and take note of it it does not matter what is your age it does not matter what stage of life you are in but if you do recall either vividly or vaguely that yes i have been a victim of some form of childhood trauma and today i am a survivor i am an adult i am going to do something to resolve it so that my quality of life improves i can enrich my life my relationships and move on and that brings me as i always say that i don't leave you just with some you know thoughts or some statistics or something i always want to talk about what can be do what can be done about it at a practical level so here it is how the healing can take place as i said regardless of your age or stage in life start with sharing with a trusted person who gives unconditional support even if you had bad experiences before look for one trusted person that's what we mean as a counselor no somebody who will listen somebody who will be empathetic somebody who will maintain your confidentiality somebody who will not give unnecessary advice that's a type of uh, person if you don't have anybody in your social circles please meet up with a counselor but sharing is a very very important aspect of the healing process then identify the traumatic feelings of the present i listed out so many of them to you know how many of those i am still carrying do i still have guilt for what happened do i still have fears do i have anxiety about the uh, future do i feel over possessive and protective about my uh, children do i fear that something can happen to them do i have developed a suspicion against all people of the opposite gender or people who may possibly be abusers i keep looking around here and there to identify ab abusers then identifying how life is being affected today and its connection to the past you will be amazed at the number of people who refuse to connect it to the past i took give you a simple example a parent who has become overprotective and possessive about the child and when i try to explain to him or her that <clears throat> this is possibly because of the trauma that you went through as a child no 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 that is different i want my child to be protected what has that got to do with this there is a lot to do with it become aware of uh, that forgiveness is for if possible not only of the abuser but whoever else there is anger against i am so angry with my mother why did she not protect me she knew that something like this is going on there was a time when i went and even spoke to her and she said shut up don't talk about such thing this is not possible don't exaggerate i am very angry and i've carried that anger for years and uh, years uh, uh, through rewarding oneself with small gifts treats enjoyable activities you deserve it just because you have been a victim earlier doesn't mean you have to keep punishing yourself and live a miserable quality of life so go out of the way to help yourself towards a better uh, life then finding a direction and purpose in life the more you start looking towards the future that now what i want to do is this it need not be very big ambitions or something it could be small uh, things i want to learn music i want to do gardening i want to take up this i want to do that something to make my life a little more meaningful 
Seema will say, you know, join DCS and become a counselor. That will give you a good meaning in life. Anything like that, whatever comes to your mind that, yes, I can now look forward to the future and thereby re reduce the impact of what happened in the past. To understand that once real identity or chastity is in the mind and not the body, I've come across so many people who feel dirty, who feel guilty, who feel upset about it. I gave you examples of the behavior earlier also. But let us understand that identity, sexuality, chastity, values are all in the mind. It has got nothing to do with the body. Understanding your own sexuality and if you are sexually active, if you are married, then understand your current sexual relationship. This is an area you know very well how we are so reticent, we are so shy, we don't even want to open it. In general also, I would say that you must be aware of your sexuality, your sexual needs, your sexual activities and more so if you're a survivor of any form of sexual abuse. Building back your self-esteem, in many cases, as I mentioned earlier, self-esteem takes a, you know, a backseat. It goes down. I am worthless. I am not great. I am nobody. I didn't protect myself. I went and did these bad things. It leads on right into adult life. Realigning relationships, particularly with men, with your partner, if you have one, getting supportive friends of both genders, all these small, small things go a long way in the healing process. And the final thing, the bottom line is that as counselors, we are trained to guide you, help you, support you as to how to systematically go through that healing uh, process. It's not a mental illness. You don't need a psychiatrist. You don't need anything of that uh, uh, sort. But you owe it to yourself to make sure that you overcome whatever you have uh, been through, regardless of your age. I know of people who are 60 plus who have suffered for years and decades, but finally decided that, yes, now that I've been made aware of it, I would like to do something about it. They have gone to a nice counselor, gone through that simple process of healing, and today they find that their quality of life and their relationships are much better. This is what you can do, and I request you, please do not neglect further. You owe it to yourself, you owe it to your near and dear, and you owe it to your future. So go ahead and do that, and we shall have an open house on you know, your comments and a discussion. But before that, my usual one minute break, and I'm requesting Seema to come in and make a couple of very quick announcements to you. Good morning. Yes, a topic which is very, uh, you know, in a counseling scenario, we see day and night people coming and talking about this. And many also saying, why do I need to talk about it now? This happened ages back. So really, you know, uh, thanks to Ali to bring up this particular topic, which is so sensitive and yet not discussed. So uh, please feel free to, you know, pass it on. Or if you think somebody needs uh, any kind of uh, help or any kind of counseling, uh, you know, Banjara Academy is there, please uh, send them here and we will uh, have a chat and uh, counseling is free in Banjara as you know so this is something that uh, we wanted to convey the th uh, second thing I wanted to tell you about is uh, uh, like Anis has put up this uh, poster about the emo feed fest it is uh, the selfie of your emotions that's why it's called emo feed. so this is what we are going to uh, uh, you know uh, this is going to be organized on 25th of uh, June this month and uh, we are also uh, looking at uh, doing some assessment tests, personal counseling, career counseling. So a lot of action there. Uh, please come. Uh, you can even circulate this with uh, all the people you know. Uh, we are also uh, inviting all the college students and all who are interested to understand about uh, different aspects of human behavior to come and uh, be part of this program. 
right so this is something that we wanted to tell you another very uh, uh, you know happening thing that's happening right now in banjara the hustle and bustle of bcs 23 students coming here and they have started uh, uh, you know writing that reflective questionnaire right uh, iaq so that is the process which has started our uh, next dcs program is starting up uh, very very soon so that process has started now this is a very special uh, you know do document which is given directly to uh, dr ali so it's a one on one thing between uh, the student and ali so that is also that's uh, something that's happening in banjara now and lot of other things so uh, whatever you think you need uh, our support and help for or you want to just come and discuss please feel free to come so with that i'll hand it back to alvin white ali back to address you on this sensitive topic yes i am back and uh, once more an apology for the technical glitch which uh, i think may have even put off some people who may have thought it's not happening so they may have logged out but nonetheless let's now go through the comments that have come already into the uh, chat box starting with renu as you explained abuse happens with known trusted people yes i agree the child must have not shared the mishap with anyone but happens to meet that person quite often after he she grows up but how to overcome it the answer is simple minimize contact with the abuser if the abuser happens to be family or somebody close and you cannot physically keep your way from that person minimize the contact make sure that that abuser has no you know psychological impact on you even if that person has a habit of making some comments or saying certain things minimize it ensure that you don't get affected go through the healing process which i mentioned once you are healed to a great extent i will never say that you can be healed 100% but if you feel i have now healed myself 60 80% i have overcome all these things like guilt suspicion low self esteem fears anxiety to a great extent then i am ready to now ask this question do i face the abuser do i confront him do i just tell him that i don't want you anywhere in my life or to ignore totally and continue with your life other than that person you got dozens of people who are nice to you with whom you can have very good relationships right surekha so says in the case of a sexually abused victim the child has never rejoiced never celebrated life how can we help this adult survivor move from there and then into the here and the now to become more emotionally able than disabled and help her live a more fuller life some of the tips and points i have already given sreka that is in a simple thing like as i said no reward yourself pamper yourself you know do something to celebrate your own uh, life focus on the good uh, relationship list out all the people who love you without any vested interest who care for you who have always been giving you some emotional support some small gestures to make sure that life is there are so many good people around me also and then most important i mentioned this to you that is identify if there is guilt if there is low self esteem if there is fear if there is anxiety these are the most predominant possible emotions any of those you identify you go ahead and first work on it either by yourself or with some trusted adult whom you have in the family or in close circles and if you can do neither then reach out to a counselor so rekha also says a counselor feel demotivated and sense of quiet desperation for most of the times even when life is good in the moment yes that's what i mentioned to you even when life is going uh, well the person feels pulled down and you know something very interesting the person starts you know hating herself looking down upon herself 
See, God has been so kind to me. I have such a loving family. I have such lovely children. I have a partner. I have parents. I have wealth. I have status. I have a home. I have everything going. And yet, I am not able to give my best. So what a horrible person I am. See how that vicious cycle keeps pulling her uh, down. So Surekha is asking, how can I, as her counselor, help her resolve the pain of abuse which she has unconsciously blocked, but is buried alive? Now here comes a very sensitive issue. Not everybody is open to even, you know, uh, work on this. I have had occasions where a person comes and talks to the counselor and feels more miserable. All these days, years and years, I had just pushed it away and life was going on. No, Today when I spoke, I am feeling more miserable than I ever felt since so many years. You know, it is like saying that I have a tumor or I have some trick, something inside my body, which is paining me very badly. When I go to the surgeon to cut it open and remove it, the pain does not reduce. The pain increases. When the pain increases, it is a healing process. The foreign object is removed. You are stitched up. You have to go through the healing process with a lot of pain. And eventually, you get a relief which is permanent. That same thing at the mental level has to go through here. Tell yourself that what you are doing is a mental surgery. And then and then only you will feel motivated. I also have a suggestion to counselors like Surekha. If you find that the counselor is not ready, so no, how does it help? No, it won't help. No, I don't want to do it. Just leave her with this thing that I know that it will help. I am available to you, but I respect your wishes. Get back to me if and when you feel that you would like to talk it over. Keep those doors open. I've had occasions where people come back after some time. Renu says, very true that anger towards mother for not protecting her from abuse during childhood may develop hatred nerve. They may carry it throughout life. Later in their life, they suffer. Yes. And mother, I gave only as an example. You know, it could be mother, brother, father. It could be anybody, you know, school teachers or... Anybody who as a child I felt should have protected me, should have taken my side, should have done something for me, which they have not uh, done. Let's say it is a father's friend who comes and molests the child. So why did my father make friends with such a horrible fellow? I was a small child. I didn't know anything. But father was wise enough to know. No, How could he have made friends with a fellow who comes and molests his own daughter? What sort of father is this? He claims to be highly educated. He is doing such great work. People respect him for so many things. But I have developed a hatred for him. Now here again comes back the same thing. First work on yourself before you try to resolve your relationship with your father. Because otherwise if you go and confront, things may become worse. I know of people who have been hasty. The moment they realize that yes, I have to do something about it. I know that this is what I have gone through. This was not good. This should not have happened to me. I was very vulnerable at that time. And here is this person who should have protected me and didn't do it or who you know, perhaps even connived with the molester or whatever um, happened. So they go and confront. Now, visualize the situation of the other person. 10, 20, 30, 40 years back, whenever this incident happened, there was nothing great as far as that adult was concerned. Adult didn't know that such a molestation take, took place or something like this happened. Or even if he or she knew, they thought it's some you know, small matter. Okay, this person, this relative whom I trusted very much, he tried to do something to my child. So I'm going to push away that fellow and forget it. Be done with it. Don't even talk. Don't even recall. And when the child who has grown up into an adult comes back and tries to confront, it can make matters worse. So ensure that your healing has taken place. Then you go back to resolving relationships with anybody, be it the abuser or be it anybody else against whom 
you carry some sort of a grudge. Yes, Surekha, you're right. Feelings of shame and unworthiness make the abused perceive themselves as unlovable and they become desolate, isolated, withdraw from close relationships. I've been telling you this, guilt, low self-esteem, feeling of worthlessness, shame. What happens if I talk to people? What will people think if they come to know that this is what I have gone through? Along with that, the most important a lot of abusers make the victim feel that you asked for it. Why did you keep coming back to me knowing that I am doing this, this, this? Because you are a bad child. You enjoyed whatever happened and now you want to make a big show out of it. You kept coming back to me and that's it. The child who has grown up into an adult still thinks that I was such a horrible child. I've come across so many cases like that. But remember, when this child keeps going back to the abuser, it is because of low self-esteem. It is because she thinks that nobody else loves me, so this is the only person who's giving me love. It is because probably this person is giving me ice creams, which I love, but mommy says I will not give you ice cream, so I go to this person. It is because this person says such nice things to me. You're the prettiest girl in the whole world. Whereas mommy looks at me and says, look at your uh, hair. You're looking like a beggar. Go, comb your hair. Now you see the contrast. I'm craving for love. I'm a growing child. I'm feeling lonely. And I'm not getting love from the people who should be giving it to me. So I keep going back to this person who I feel in my all my innocence that this person is uh, uh, you know, giving me true love. Renu says many times abusers do, uh, the abused child is permanently damaged and difficult to cope up with her own life. It is sad, but it is happening. Yes, it has been happening from ages, but I would only contest the word permanently damaged. It is not like a disability where your hand or leg has been cut and thrown off. In fact, now with technology advances, you have such fantastic robotic arms and robotic legs, which are as good or sometimes better than your uh, you know, the usual ones. You've uh, seen that thing called blade runners. People who have, whose leg has been amputated, they have been fitted with an artificial leg which looks like a blade. And they're running in Olympics. They're running so fast. I'm just giving that as an example to show you that even where there is a permanent damage, like an amputation, still something can be done. Here, nothing has been amputated. No part of your brain or heart has been cut and taken away. It has only been damaged. And you can work on it. I have worked with people who are senior citizens who spent their whole life miserably because of what happened in their childhood. But once they opened out and once they were ready to work on it and with proper guidance, step-by-step -step procedures, they actually found that even at any age, your life quality can improve. Roshan says, if sex education can be discussed freely in a family, then such abuse can be avoided. Very true. See, that's a topic by itself. I'm not taking that up today. But I, if you remember, of course, the technology glitch was there. So uh, many people could not, uh, most people could not hear. I started off by saying that one part of it is to create awareness, sex education, what Roshan mentioned just now, to ensure that we protect children a little more and protect not by physical protection but by empowering them how to make them aware to protect themselves the second is what to do when you suspect that a child is being abused the third is what do you do when a child has actually been abused all these things are very very serious they have to be taken up maybe we'll take that up as a topic one of these saturdays and we'll discuss it threadbare but like i said today my concern was primarily on adult survivors. People who have gone through this traumatic experience, survived it, grown up, moved on in life. Education, job, career, marriage, children, everything has happened. But they have not been healed. We understand physical healing so much, no? If I broke my leg when I was a child, even as an adult, sometimes when there is slight pain, I go running back to the orthopedician and say, and he explains to me that, yeah, you know, at that time, because the healing took place like this, or because we had to put a steel rod or because of that, 
you need to take certain precautions, you need to do it this way, that way, do some physiotherapy. All that is explained and we follow it. We accept the advice given by the doctors and therapists. But unfortunately, when it comes to mental health, we tend to take it too lightly. We don't take it seriously when a therapist or a counselor tells you that you need to you know, heal yourself. Majinath says, is isolation and reservedness common in introverted people? Yes, definitely it is very common. And there is, if you probe sufficiently, you will find that there is some reason for it. We have to identify the reason. That is what empathy is all about, which I keep reminding every now and then, that we need to find out the why behind the what. What is this person doing? This person is in isolation. This person has become reserved. Now you work on the symptom. No, no, come out. We'll go for a movie. Join this club. Take up this activity. Start talking to people. It doesn't work because you're only dealing with the symptoms. You need to deal with the cause. So if you have the time and patience and expertise, sit with such a person, find out the uh, uh, cause, and then and then only you know, you know that you can move on it. Okay. How is this abuse defined? What constitutes abuse? In fact, that also I started off in the beginning, but it uh, I was muted and you couldn't hear me. I mentioned that child abuse could be verbal, it could be physical, and it could be sexual. Okay. A lot of verbal and physical abuse can also happen by loved ones who care for you and who want the best of you. A parent who goes on abusing the child verbally saying, what are you good for nothing? Why don't you study? See your sister, how well she is doing. I have to struggle so much. I have to earn for your sake. How will I be able to get you admission in a college? I can't afford to pay donations. If you don't study properly, what are you? You are good for nothing. You will grow up and become some coolie or auto rickshaw driver or something. This is verbal abuse by loved ones who are trying to give an impetus to the child. It could also be verbal abuse by people who want to put down the uh, child. Physical abuse, again, it happens in both cases. Sexual abuse is obviously from a person whose mind is very perverted and the person just does not care for the damage that it happens to the child. And that is why we take that up most seriously. Arvind says, my son faced sexual abuse as a nine-year-old in a boarding school. This is what I want to tell you. Don't think that a, a sexual abuse takes place only to girls. It happens to boys also. Spoke to me about it in COVID. See, one blessing of COVID that the child... Earlier could not talk about it, but at least spending quality time with mother during the lockdown, probably he gathered the courage and then he spoke to the mother. Angry at me for concentrating on studies in childhood. This is what I meant by saying, you carry that anger. You only spoke about studies. You only put me in boarding. You did this, but you didn't realize the type of things which I went through, how I was facing sexual abuse by my seniors, etc. Suggested to go for therapy and inner child healing. He refuses help and does not accept that he needs it, but continues blaming parents what to do. One possible suggestion, Tarvin, could be that you tell him that, okay, since I have uh, you know, let you down and I have done wrong things, I want to make up for it. So I will go for counseling. I will meet up with a counselor and find out what I can do to compensate for whatever happened to you because of my negligence. Once you start going to the counselor, tell your son that I'm understanding a lot of things which I didn't understand. It's never too late to understand. I'm getting some good clarity by talking to the counselor. At the same time, the counselor mentioned that can I listen to your son and find out what exactly he feels towards this thing and how you have let him down. If I understand that from your son, I will be able to help you better. So you know what you are doing? You are not getting your child for counseling. You are getting your child as a rescuer to help mommy get counseled and to improve herself. These are some of the type of things which have helped 
we can discuss it on a one to one basis if this doesn't work that may work we can try different things from time to time but keep be aware of it till something can be done until you know that he has been able to resolve it emotionally so that it doesn't affect him later in adult life renu says many times abuser thinks abused child doesn't remember what has happened but victim always suffer through out life say yes sometimes as i mentioned to you <clears throat> the victim may actually think that i forgotten i've had cases where victims have said no i don't remember did i did really something happen to me yes i've got some vague unsettling thoughts but maybe i'm exaggerating maybe i'm imagining nobody imagines sexual abuse so even if it is very vague even if you don't remember the integrity or the details the very fact that there is something troubling you as hazy memories and most important it is playing havoc with your emotions you have to resolve it once you sit with a sensitive counselor and you start talking you will see how a lot of things keep tumbling and coming out you may, will not even realize it you check with our uh, counselors they come to speak about something totally different they may come for their child they may come for their career they may come for whatever it is and before you know it the topic slowly goes into like i told you i don't know i'm not very happy i think i'm being thankless god has given me so much why am i behaving like this nothing is wrong with my life everything is fine i should be a happy person but i'm not and then slowly goes back and we always encourage every person who comes to us for detailed counseling to go all the way back to childhood and start from there it need not be sexual abuse but any disturbance i told you no a simple thing like a parent always comparing me to my brother your brother does so well your brother is good what are you doing about it that may have left an impact on me so starting from there we work our way through coming to as i mentioned in the checklist what are my emotions today Sureka says, betrayal is too kind a word to describe a situation in which the grandfather said he loved his granddaughter so much that he ought to teach her about the horrors of the world in order to make her a stronger person, makes her participate in sexual rituals, and the memory of it makes her head spin every even today. Can you imagine? Keep the sexuality part of it separately. A growing child, a girl child. what does she think of somebody like the grandfather he is the ultimate he is the hero he is the guru he is the master he is everything for her he cannot do anything wrong in fact he is the ultimate protector he is my father's father or mother's father or whatever he is in the normal course i would look upon him for any disturbance that i have anywhere else but what happened he attacked me in a very gentle and subtle way before i realized it he had started sexually molesting me and now he justifies it he says things like you know it's a horrible world out there i want to teach you so that you can be all this is utter nonsense these are the ways and means the same way as the abuser makes the victim feel guilty why did you keep coming back to me why were you enjoying yourself so much why is it that whenever i said that you are so pretty and i love you you used to giggle you used to laugh and you used to come and sit close to me how can you blame me for it this is not an abuse this is something which you have asked for it's a two way thing and that guilt at such a small age i did such horrible things did i want to do such horrible things now the same thing happens with the grandfather because he is such a trusted person this child starts feeling is it actually okay to do such things to children is what he is doing is right because after all he is my grandfather no now that turmoil that takes place that ups and downs of the value system as i mentioned in the checklist the first checklist that things can really go bad the person can really be shaken up very badly Roshan says it's a taboo to talk about sex in a family. If parents can encourage their children to talk openly on this subject, 
then child abuse can be avoided 100% right Roshan. And this is something that we constantly work on. We have this program going that, uh, you know, certificate in child and adolescent development. Next week, I'm doing a live program for them only to understand sexuality of children, how to make children aware of their sexuality. I'm not talking about sex education. I'm talking about sexuality education. It starts with a two-year-old whom you teach what is good touch and bad touch. How do you protect yourself? What are the do's and don'ts? Starting from there all the way up to adulthood. There's a great need for it. On our part, as and when it is needed, as and when we we feel it is needed, people don't even realize that it is needed. We keep doing these things. I would exhort each one of you, at least today after going through this uh, interaction, please start spreading the word. Make people aware of uh, uh, this. So as Seema has just now put up, this video will be available on our FB page and also on our website. Please feel free to share it with uh, anyone who is interested. Keep spreading the message. Each one of us can you know, reach out to at least one, two, three families. And that will mean one, two, three children growing up in a healthy as uh, thing. Yes, Sindhu, I agree that one hour for this topic is not enough. Maybe we should have continuation on one more Saturday. Yes, maybe we can, as some people have asked, maybe we can start off from the childhood, as from the point of protecting children, avoiding this and whatever can be done about it, and then coming to the adult. Next time, maybe we'll do something of that uh, uh, nature. Uh, last uh, uh, comment here is sexual abuse happens to be irrespective of sex. It may happen anytime with known and unknown. Please talk to your child. Assure them that they're always for sharing all is good and bad so that you can resolve. Never bring up past and address your own child. Empowering the child is the only solution. Wonderful closing statement. I think that was a very nice way, a very nice and sensible comment and directive from Renu. Using that, I will say bye-bye to you again with the apology for what happened in the first few minutes. We just couldn't get through, but we did finally overcome it. So get ready for next Saturday's program. Same time, 11 o'clock, we are going to be meeting again. Bye-bye.